We reviewed an itty bitty petite 60% joint from Keychron, but now we're going to let the GPU cool, get away from gaming, slide that 60% off the mouse pad and get to productivity with a 96% keyboard, almost a full size, that has media controls and a nice dial wheel. This has an all metal base, PBT hot swappable keycaps, Gateron brown switches, which are also hot swappable, tri mode connectivity, around 240 hours of battery life with the backlight off. I said backlight, there's a shitload of RGB options. This thing weighs over four pounds, so if you get mad at somebody, and need to take them down, your keyboard's also a weapon. And moreover than all that, a lot of the fangs that you would do building a keyboard, such as foam reinforcement for sound dampening, are already done. So if you're trying to enter the custom keyboard world, maybe getting a pre-built keyboard that's ready to run but can be customized from there might be the way. This is the way. But if you want to fully run the gauntlet, you can get a DIY kit from Keychron for $20 cheaper and drop in your own switches and keycaps. That was a lot to digest for an intro, but now your tummy's a little sore. Let's jump into this comprehensive in-depth review. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this keyboard was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. And we're not going to spend much time at all on the website because we did that during the 60% review. However, I do like the layout, even though it can be a little bit confusing just because they have so many models and they also sell DIY kits and individual parts, such as the switches and the PBT caps. As with their other models, the Q5 Max does have two options, fully assembled and then a bare bones kit, which is only a $20 difference and you're getting keycaps and switches. So as long as you like one of the three switch options, well, I guess two because the bananas are out of stock currently, then I would absolutely recommend popping for the fully assembled keyboard. Not to mention they're already pre lube switches. You can just get up and running. You don't really have to sit there and build a keyboard unless you want that experience. It can be fun, just like building a computer. It can also be a pain in the dick as well. So you do have two base options here, color wise, carbon black and shell white. I do have the shell white version version to go with my theme or setup. So the bananas are currently out of stock for the carbon black, but if you get the white version like I did, the bananas are in stock. But the version that we're testing here today does have Jupiter Brown switches. Reason being that I selected that when communicating with my PR rep over there that sent this bad boy out is the Jupiter bananas were on the keyboard that I previously reviewed, the 60 percenter, and Jupiter reds are linear, which makes me want to throw up in my mouth and then swallow it back down for nutrition. Linear switches are the goddamn devil. They're the ones that have no tactile bump and no click. If it feels like you're pressing air basically until you bottom out at the bottom of your travel. I really do love this diagram or breakout, this exploded parts view. You've got rubber gaskets, sound absorbing foam, pet film, latex bottom pad, things that you would be doing on a DIY build. Freaking awesome to see in a pre built keyboard. A pre built custom, that is. You've got your pre built pre builts like Razer, Steel Series, HyperX, Logitech, Corsair, and then you've got building a keyboard from scratch from parts. And then you've got your pre built customs, which can be taken apart and are completely modified and you can customize it from there. The box design is identical across all Keychron models. However, this box is larger and of course heavier because this is a 96%, almost a full-size keyboard in comparison to the 65 that we reviewed previously, but all matte black design with a little bit of holographic. And rather than a typical marketing slogan or catchphrase, something like tallywhack the enemies, slap the noobs, it just calls it like it is, an open source customizable keyboard for peak productivity. And on the bottom right of the top part of the box, you are gonna have some details as far as the color of the frame, the type of switches, and the specific model. So this is the Q5 Max. You're going to have your quick start guide top dead center, which does a fantastic job of explaining all the functions of your keyboard, including the warranty and how to factory reset if you have issues, but also how to control your RGB lighting and a little bit more information on this side. Keep in mind, there is also a full blown instruction manual underneath this thick chunk of foam, probably about half inch of foam here. Very nice. A little plastic sneeze guard holding your keyboard in place, although she's already out and about doing the Lord's work. A little warning if you're going to be hot swapping your switches. Your actual instruction manual is pretty good. English is the primary language, decent font. I wish it was just a skosh bigger, but pretty useful diagrams and breakouts of all the features and functions. Then you also have a USB-C cable. This is braided, not rubber or microfiber. It does have one of these large Tootsie Rolls, which absolutely suck for cable management under a desk and supply no purpose to this cable. This is also relatively short. You can bring your own cable as it's not proprietary. And there is no dust covers on the USB-C or A end. However, this is an adapter as this is a C to C cable. And this part feels really nice. It actually feels like metal right here. Everything about 
about this cable is pretty decent except for this little Tootsie Roll and it being a little bit short. You also have some Keychron branding on this Velcro tie back. Then you are going to have an included two-piece keycap remover and switch puller. You are going to have a couple of example switches to show you the craftsmanship of those PBT delicious pudding caps. These are pretty thick and also these feel really good to the fingertips. Obviously there's a plastic bag, a little rubber here protecting me, but I've been typing on this thing overnight and my god it feels amazing. Then you are going to have some stick-on rubberized pads. These are non-slip feet if you want to stick them on the bottom and a little foam pad. Not really sure what that's for considering there's already a lot of dampening inside the keyboard's body. A little Phillips head screw in case you want to disassemble this thing as well as a little Allen key. So all the tools you need for a full disassembly and some really nice brass hardware there as well. Then you are also going to have this USB-A to female C end adapter and this is going to be for your dongle which I do like. This is really small. It's not going to look super ugly sticking off the front of your tower and it's also branded with Keychron. So if you're somebody like me that has a dozen dongles sitting in a drawer for controllers and keyboards, it's nice that this is actually branded. As for initial impressions and build quality, as with all Keychron models, regardless of size, this thing feels incredibly durable and well put together. You have this all metal base, you have these really nice PBT keycaps, and there's definitely some sound dampening going on inside this base, such as foam sheets. And I will say the majority of the buttons are relatively silent and give you a little bit of that thock right out of the box, except for the space bar, which does sound a little bit hollow and wiggly for my liking. Granted, you probably are never gonna be spamming it like this. Even just single presses, there's definitely a stabilizer bar in there. It feels very even across the entire bar. Pressure feels evenly distributed, but the sound just isn't the most satisfying. There is going to be a full sound slash typing test later in this video. I don't know why we're in fluid ounces. That's not the proper measurement. There we go, pounds and ounces. That's a little more our speed, eh? The other one was like three and a half pounds. This is four pounds, 14 ounces. Whoops a doozy, I just realized my microphone was in guitar mode for some reason. So if my voice sounded a little bit wonky, that, that that's why. Starting with this bass, it's low slung, heavy and stable. It is a CNC aluminum body. The board inside, the PCB is a thousand hertz polling rate, which is less important than something like a mouse or controller, but still higher speeds, better, lower input lag. The board is sandwiched between enhanced acoustic foams. You do have three modes of connectivity, wired or tethered, of course, and then 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And the Bluetooth technology on board is 5.1, which is very respectable. It's not some older janky technology like 3.0 on the Switch Pro controller. There's also Mac and Windows support, both wired and wireless, and a double gasket design, which definitely leads to that premium filling build quality, sound and typing feel for that matter. The only thing I personally don't like, there is no flip up feet at the bottom that can kind of angle this base, although it's already at a bit of a natural angle. However, if you want to be able to prop this bad boy up into a different typing position, that would be nice. However, the keys definitely have a nice little rounded edge, which we'll talk about more in the keycap section. Makes typing a real joy. As for the keycaps and overall cosmetics or appearance of this keyboard, I would say Keychron absolutely nailed it, just like the 60 percenter that I reviewed recently. The whites look, well, white. They don't have that weird eggshell off color, and this gray looks phenomenal. It's a little bit darker than I expected, so it doesn't necessarily go with my themer setup, but it looks phenomenal. And I have to say the texture lettering looks incredibly high resolution and there's no chance of these fading off anytime soon. They also feel very nice on the fingertips. The plastics are very high quality. They are KSA PBTs. And if you don't like the stalkers, you can of course change the lookout because they are hot swappable. You're going to take this little egg beater looking ass side. I'm doing this one handed like a boss. Lift up. Come here, baby. <clears throat> Holy shit. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. I've never seen that before. I just pulled the whole switch out. There we go. Problem solved. So now you can see that empty socket and we are going to talk about these switches in great detail in the next section, but we're still talking about these keycaps, these KSA PBTs, which look phenomenal. Even on the inside, you can see their double layer, very nice, secure plastics, also very thick. No complaints here. And I do like the shape of them. They have that perfect typing position. They have a little dip in, a little half pipe that's going to cup your fingertips. It makes typing a real breeze. You generally don't see this on comp pack keyboards like 60 percenters or even 75s. But since this is almost a full size at 96 percent, you get those niceties like that volume control knob. Now there is an additional control on this model and that is going to be this knob, which I will say the plastics are good, but not great. You have this little diamond pattern cut in the side, which gives you a little bit of grip. My biggest complaint here is going to be the positioning since it's shoved right between these two buttons. There really is no way to grab this knob unless you've got toothpicks for fingers to not hit these other two buttons. Granted, I don't actually press the them in, but I do brush up against them. And the plastics here could be enhanced on their next version or iteration, but what I really do like is going to be the resistance when you're turning this dial. You get nice distinct notches or steps, and it requires a good amount of strength or resistance to twist this bad boy, and then when you click it in, which will be muting your media, 
It's quiet and secure. Very nice. Also, there's very little side to side play or wiggle on this knob. Actually, none. And if this could be moved out to the outside a little bit more and maybe coated in rubber, metal, wood, or just better plastics, this would be fucking awesome. It already is very nice. Reds are linear, bananas we've reviewed previously, and actually liked them quite a bit. However, today we're getting our fingertips on the Gateron Browns, which have a very light operating force, which we are going to talk about. Not much in the means of pre-travel, but a little bit mo than the bananas on the overall travel distance. And these are tactile switches, meaning they're not going to have some loud click but they are going to have a tactile bump that you can feel, a wall, if you will, that lets you know you're about to actuate your switch. Pre-lubed? Uh, yes, they are. You don't have to bust each switch apart and grease it up or anything. You can if that makes you feel good about yourself, but you don't have to. And then sound level is gentle. However, this thing is pretty quiet. Typing test later. So come on down. Let's talk about the Gateron Brown. These are pretty damn good. I will say they are lighter than I initially expected, even looking at the diagram and seeing that they have a very light actuation for when you get your fingertips on them, they are freakishly light. And at first, when I started clickety clacking on this thing, typing on it, it wasn't even plugged in. I was just kind of dry firing on it, so to speak. I almost thought these were linear switches and I had accidentally got shipped the reds. I was getting ready to burn down my house and throw a massive tantrum, but these are the browns. There is just the ever so slightest, but still noticeable tactile bump. And that does start right at the beginning of the switch. So as soon as you begin to depress the button, you are on that wall and then you get a nice crisp break, although it is so light that half the time it just feels like a linear switch. I definitely do crave just a little bit more resistance. I have no issue with the pre-travel, however there's a little bit more post-travel than I'd like, so this is already click actuated. I have all this dead-end slop at the end, which granted if you're light-handed you're just going to type right over that and not actually bottom out or depress all the way to the very end of your travel. I do also like this clear RGB housing. It lets the light bleed through in a very cool way, especially depending on what keycaps you go with. So my opinion on the Gateron Browns, they are too light for my personal liking. I like the pre-travel and the fact that the wall is right there as soon as you start to press the switch, but there's a little bit more post-travel at the bottom than I'd like. If I had to throw a grade on them, I'd give them about 7 out of 10. So I'm not using my desk microphone, the Shure SM7B, because the noise gate on this GoXLR mixer is so thick, so heavy, that it's going to cut out pretty much all of the typing sound because the switches are already pretty damn quiet with those browns. But let's get to clickety-clacking on these suckers and get my ergonomics correct. I'm trying to angle the camera very tactfully because I don't have pants on right now. I like to type in the nude for the simple pleasure it bestows. Oh! I've come unhinged. I promise you I'm usually quicker than that, but uh, you, you can hear what the keyboard sounds like. There's lights, I've got a camera, and we're about to get down to action. To get the RGB on and off, you're going to hold down the function button and hit tab, and that will turn your RGB on and off. So we all get into a mood where we just don't want our lights on, maybe it's disorienting and whatnot, bam, turn it right off. But to swap through the modes, you're going to hold down function and hit Q, and there is a slew of modes, I do mean a slew. Okay, a little pinwheel, uh, another spiral. All right, that one's pretty sick. You can dim the lights by holding down function, W to increase, we are maxed out currently, S to decrease, so they get very, very dim, and then also pretty gosh darn bright as well. T and G will be increase and decrease your speed, so T is to make it go faster, G is to slow it on down, which pretty much brings it to a standstill or a halt. Okay, that's very slow. A little more faster spaz it out. The software suite or application to control this keyboard is going to be VIA. The first Google result is going to be the specific one you need, which is use VIA.app. However, there's also a very good article specifically for Keychron keyboards because this program really isn't plug and play. It doesn't just pop up and start working for you. Reason for that being is this isn't designed specifically for these keyboards. Razer keyboards have Synapse, SteelSeries has Sonar, so on and so forth. But when you build your own custom keyboard by parts or you buy a custom pre-built, they don't have a software program for them. So you rely on VIA, which 
which is designed for third-party generic keyboards that don't have a program. I had difficulty with the 60 percenter getting up and running with the BIA software, so hopefully it's a lot smoother in this expedition. We are going to authorize the device. We've got our Q5 Max here. Hit connect. Over here in settings, you do have a dark mode. However, I force a dark mode on all websites, so it doesn't really do anything for me. This is just a diagnostic tool to see if you can press buttons. You're not really, there's no control here. You can't rebind your buttons or have control of the knob. That's because you need to follow along with these steps here. You need to download a JSON file. Now the JSON file you need is actually down here and make sure that you have the knob version. So scroll your ass down here. Don't mess with the toolbox or the ANSI file or anything like that. Come on down here and get the JSON. Yes, sir. It's going to be a .json and it's going to walk you through the steps as to what to do with that JSON file. Okay, we are paired already. Go to the settings and click this tab for show design tab. Click on the design tab. Confirm that. So you should be able to drag in the zip file. In fact, that's how it shows it in the demo on that little help page, but didn't work for me. So I unzipped it and I'm going to drag in just the JSON. Perfect. Shows that we have the correct model and it is paired. Awesome. That worked for us. Now over here in the configure tab, which I am going to full screen. Now keep in mind, this isn't like an actual application that you can pin to your taskbar like Razer Synapse or SteelSeries Sonar. This is a web page. You got a URL here and yep, web over here. This is going to be rebinding of all of your keys. So if you want to have GBZ for some reason, you can do that here. The only things you cannot bind is going to be enter for select and escape for go back. Makes sense to me. You do have media controls, which can be bound to this, this sick little knob here, spinning clockwise, counterclockwise, and clicking it in. You do, of course, have macro support. So if you want to be able to press one button and have a string of actions happen in game, you can do that there. Just like a stinky old onion or an ogre, you've got layers here. And you can do individual key RGB and the RGB control can happen on board on the fly. Uh, I don't need this silly little app, but you now know how to get it. And that is what's important here. I've done my job. As for battery life, I had to bust out the shovel and do a little bit of digging because on the landing page for the K5 and all their models, it doesn't give you a straight up estimate for the battery life, I guess, because there's so many variables in there. Things like, do you have the RGB lighting on and things like how bright is your RGB? But the K2, which has the same size battery, a 4,000 milliamp hour, is advertised at 240 hours of typing with the backlight off. So we can use that as a baseline, 240 hours, backlight off, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And as with all Keychron products, your keyboard is gonna be covered for 12 months or one year. This is also a very useful diagram that we haven't looked at previously, and it's the differences amongst their models, specifically just in the Q series. So the Q Max, Pro, and standard Missionary Q. The big headliner here is you are gonna have a 2.5 4 gigahertz dongle with the Qmax and also a ton more internal care when it comes to sound dampening. Also different switch families for each of the models and you got more onboard storage with the Qmax. As for the pros, cons, and verdict, we're going to start with the con shortcomings or limitations because there are a few. I'd like to see some plastic little flip up feet so you can angle the base for a better typing position. I'd like to be able to adjust the base and with a fixed position like this, you can, it's fixed obviously, but more adjustment is more better. The space bar I did mention had not the most satisfying auditory sound. It was a little little bit hollow and blah, 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 blah. mostly when you're spamming it though, but you're never going to sit there just double finger twiddling the space bar. That's just something that a YouTuber is going to do for a sound check. You know, IRL, you're just going to be typing with it or using it to jump in a game. It didn't sound terrible for that, but I'm still going to do something to it to make it sound a little more better. The media knob, I would greatly like to see repositioned to the top right corner and also rematerialed with maybe a rubber coating or metal or just better feeling plastics. The included cable just doesn't really live up to the prestige of having a K-Cron custom keyboard, but no big deal because you can bring your own to the party. They're not proprietary or anything. The warranty at one year in North America is somewhat of a con considering Razer's two years, Steel Series two years, Logitech I believe is two or three years, and those are just the pre-built I can buy them at Walmart or Best Buy keyboards. The biggest con in my opinion is by far going to be the Via application considering it's kind of a pain to get up and running, but once you do get it up and running, you do have a lot of customization, but you can clearly tell that it's not designed for a Keychron keyboard. It's just kind of a generic, this will work with any keyboard kind of program. You definitely get that vibe from it. Just like Rewaz for controllers, you can tell that it's a third-party generic meant to work with any keyboard program. And I don't like the vibes that it gives me. It's also a pain in the dick to get up and running. Onto the pros, cosmetically, this is a gorgeous keyboard. I think those stock keycaps look phenomenal. And of course, they are hot swappable. Speaking of hot swappable, so are the switches. And I am going to list those Gateron Browns as a pro, although they are a little bit light for my liking and have a little bit more post travel once you've actuated the switch. And I think I'll get used to them. I already like them and maybe over time I'll love them. The media control knob, granted the positioning and materials aren't the best, but the actual feeling of the rotation, the resistance and the notches and 
steps on it feels super good. And just having a knob is awesome for turning volume up and down quickly and being able to mute. And you have three media buttons right next to that, which can be fast forward, pause, launch an app like Spotify, whatever you want. Build quality is just there. Everything from the base, it's heavy as shit. It just feels like it's really well put together and sounds really nice too. I do love the tri-mode connectivity, Bluetooth 5.1, a 2.4 gigahertz dongle and being wired. And I do like the Mac and Windows support because I have both and I'd like to be able to use the same keyboard. And the last pro, which kind of rolls me into the verdict is I think the Keychron, not just the Q5 Max, but all the models, depending on what size and what you're going to be doing with it, typing, gaming, are you in an office space where it has to be quiet? Do you prefer tactile clicky switches? Keychron's a good entrance to the custom controller world because you're getting a pre-built that's ready to run right out of the box, but you can hot swap the switches and the keycaps, even take apart the base very easily and swap out the foam. So overall, you're getting that custom keyboard experience without having to build one from scratch. So if you're new to the custom keyboard world, Keychron is a great entrance. And not just an entrance, but you could keep that same Keychron keyboard for five to 10 years and upgrade the same one or get a new keyboard and then still bust out your Keychron every once in a while and be like, yeah, I've had that thing for years. And I think it would still be plugging along. The Q5 Max is linked in the description below alongside an exclusive discount for my audience. Drop in the comment section below what you're using in the keyboard department, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. So this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly that subscribe button like it owes you money and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow.